Hello, this is Hands-On Infrastructure Automation with Ansible. This is Section 5, Maintaining Roles and Templates with Variable. In this section, we will look at using variables with roles. We'll look at the hierarchy overriding process. We'll explore Ansible facts, which are variables that we get for free. We'll look at applying variables to groups of hosts, groups of servers, or to individual hosts. We'll look at using variables to control tasks, whether they happen or not. We'll look at registering the result of a task into a variable so we can use it further on. We'll look at using lists and dictionaries inside of tasks. And we'll look at using lists and dictionaries inside our Jinja 2 templates. Using variables for all roles. In this video, we will look at role defaults. We'll look at the all group. We'll look at variables that Ansible applies to all roles, all hosts, for a given run of a playbook. And we'll look at role variables in the playbook. Now, this bulleted list is something of the hierarchy that we'll be looking at, so it's useful to keep this in mind. But it's not a complete hierarchy yet. There are some other things that we'll be filling in in future videos. The first thing we should talk about is what are variables? We've seen variables. We used them extensively while we were building up Jinja 2 templates in our previous videos, but we didn't really talk yet about kind of where they exist, why they exist, how they can be overridden. This is the opportunity to fill that in. So variables are used within Ansible to specify dynamic values, values that we might want to change over time, that we might want to have be different for different systems, different for different groups of systems, Maybe we have systems in different data centers, and they have different things about them. Maybe some of our systems have more memory than others, and we need to configure our systems, our configuration, our software based on that. There are things that are intended to be overridden, either to control Ansible tasks or to populate our template files that get written out to the remote system. And what's nice about the ability to use variables and to override variables from different levels of a hierarchy is that it makes it easier for us to create reusable and generic roles. So our roles can focus on understanding the piece of software that we're intending to configure. They don't need to make decisions on how many simultaneous connections to support, how much memory to use, what ports to listen on. Those are all things that can be decided in variables that we can potentially override without having to go into the role and make changes. Now, in an effort to make this hierarchy, this overriding process, a little bit easier to understand, to get us started, what I wanted to do was show you a role that I wrote just for the purpose of illustrating this hierarchy. So this is going to be intentionally a very simple role, but it'll show us the way in which variables come from different places in order to provide us with the information that actually ends up in the content. So here's our very simple role. As you can see, it's just got one task in it, and that one task is just a debug print statement. So what this debug print statement is going to do is it's going to use this variable called me, and you'll notice that we're leveraging the Jinja default that I filter that I talked about in a previous video, where we're providing a default value for this variable, so we don't have to set this me variable equal to anything at all anywhere in order for this to work correctly. It has a default that it can be based on. So what I'll do is I'll walk through some of the other files that you'll see as we go through this process. So one file you'll see is a role default in defaults main.yaml. And you'll notice that we're going to define the me variable. But for right now, we've put this little hash symbol in front just to comment that out. So we're not actually defining it at this level yet. You'll also see the group vars all.yaml file. And similarly, we just have a commented out value for this variable that just to indicate the source of where this is coming from. And then finally, you won't see it there yet, but we will be able to override the value of this variable from the playbook. So for right now, the playbook just has the name of the role in it, but potentially we'll be able to override from there. So that's our basic role that we'll be working with. We'll jump over to our code window. And let's just start with the basic configuration. I'm going to run 
the world's simplest Ansible command. Just give it a playbook and an inventory file. It's bouncing against the local host in this case. And you'll see that because we have not defined that variable anywhere, the me variable isn't defined anywhere, we're using the default value that we provided using the Jinja default filter. So right now, our debug message is coming from the tasks main.yaml. Let's go ahead and work our way up to the next level. We'll edit roles, we'll edit the role defaults, and we'll just take that comment off of there. So I've worked my way up now just to the roles default, so I'm still making changes within the role. I'll go ahead and run the Ansible playbook command again, and you can see that now we've switched from using the default value that was in the Jinja 2 default filter, we've switched over to using the role defaults. But we're still making changes to the role, and as we said earlier, it's not really desirable, that's not really what we want to do. What we want to be able to do is override variables from outside the role, so that our role can be generic, it can apply to lots of systems, and then we can just set variables to what they need to be. So let's start by doing that in the group vars directory. So Ansible for all groups, for all systems in our inventory, for all groups of systems in our inventory, it will always use variables that it finds in an all file or an all.yaml file, or if you have a directory called all, all of the files in that directory will get pulled in and any variables that are defined there will get used. So in this case, if we take this all.yaml and we again uncomment this particular variable, so now and we run our Ansible playbook command again, even though we have a task level default for this variable, and even though we have a role level default for this variable, our group vars all.yaml wins. So this is the level at which this applies to all of the systems, all of the hosts, all of the roles. This is that lowest level outside the role where we can start overriding things. There might be cases, this is a little bit more uncommonly used, but there might be cases where we want to override individual roles. One place that we can do that is at the level of the playbook. We showed this a little bit when I talked about role dependencies in a previous video. I talked about how we could use those dependency declarations to actually configure a role from outside. And I went through some examples of that. In this case, we're doing something similar, but we're actually doing it from the top level playbook. So what we'll do here is we'll take this statement that just declares that we want to use the role, and we'll turn it into a YAML dictionary. And in this case, we'll add a value for the variable that comes from the playbook itself. And if you remember when we talked about those role dependencies, we talked about how I can use these curly braces to declare a YAML dictionary in a way that is compact. It stays on one line. I don't need to spread it out over multiple lines. So we save that. We run the same Ansible playbook command again. And you can see now we've overridden not just the task, not just the role default, but also the group vars all.yaml. So we're all the way at the top level and we're overriding the playbook. There's one more place. The playbook is pretty high in that hierarchy. It wins most of the time. But there's one more place that we can override things from, and this will win over any other definition. We're going to do it on the command line, and the command line will always win. If we start with our Ansible playbook command, if we use dash e, which means extra vars, then we can actually supply a value right here on the command line. If we run this command, even though we've declared this variable in the task, we've declared it in the role defaults, we've declared it in group vars all.yaml, we've declared it in the playbook, none of that matters. The command line will always win. And this is very much intentional. You might have normal system configuration, and then you might have a need to override it under certain circumstances. Uh, the command line is obviously the right place to give you the power to do any and all overriding of variables. So this is the place where this kind of thing can be done. And so Ansible will allow you to do that directly from the command line. So this is our basic concept with variables. If we think about variables are, they're uh, dynamic values that we specify. They allow us to create reusable and generic roles. We create our roles to take all of the configuration things that we might need to change, and we push those out into variables. And then anything that our roles do in terms of tasks and templates, uh, we're going to use those variables 
in order to determine exactly what to do when we run the role. Um, that way we can, we can have a role that we've written once, and we can use it on a variety of different systems in a variety of different scenarios, and we can reuse that role. That makes that role what I call the reusable unit of automation. That is our introduction to variables.